Hello again, this is Tubal Kane from Illinois. Thought I'd talk a little bit about three jaw chucks uh, for use on the lathe. Here I am at my closing lathe and I got a three jaw mounted in there. And uh, a few things I wanted to tell you. Uh, number one is that a three jaw chuck is uh, also called a universal chuck, kind of like a drill chuck, in that all three jaws come into play at the same time. And sometimes it's called a scroll chuck. And uh, sometimes we just call it the three jaw chuck, but it's your best friend uh, on the lathe. But remember that it isn't very accurate. And I'll, especially when they're old and uh, been used quite a bit, uh, and I'm going to demonstrate that here momentarily. But the other type of chuck, I'm not really going to talk about it today, a four jaw chuck is called an independent jaw chuck because each uh, jaw moves in independently by a screw and you can see the screw. These chucks have a lot more uh, pressure and can hold the work a lot tighter because you're using an Acme screw, actually four of them, to tighten down. So, and they can be more accurate and that's shown in one of my other videos as well. Now I just told you that uh, a three jaw is sometimes called a scroll chuck and the reason for that is, uh, well here's a little three jaw I've taken apart and I'll talk more about this later on, but inside of the uh, chuck there is a, a scroll, actually it's kind of like a spiral and as you uh, turn your chuck there's a gear here chuck, when you turn your chuck key and it plays on uh, this gear on the back of the scroll and that's what tightens it and of course the back of the jaws look like this and they ride in the scroll but I think you can uh, understand now that these chucks are expensive to build and they always cost more than a four jaw chuck and uh, you can't get as much pressure on them and that's because the scroll here does not exert the same pressure that an Acme thread does as shown to you on a four jaw chuck if you're only allowed one chuck, that's all the money you get, you got available, get a four jaw, not a three jaw. But you certainly would like to have. Okay, I'm back at the closing lathe now, and I have mounted in the chucks and tightened down a, a piece of ground stock. Actually, it's a ground dowel pin, about one inch in diameter, so that's very accurate, and we don't have to worry about that giving us a, a misleading reading. But I got the uh, dial indicator on there, and as I uh, turn the chuck, turn the work here, you're going to see that. Uh, we have approximately ten thousandths uh, uh, that were off and uh, this chuck has been around a while and it's not a very accurate chuck and uh, I still like it but it's really just for roughing work. Now I moved across the shop and I'm at my little Hardinge lathe which I really like. This lathe hasn't had a whole lot of use and uh, it's very precision to start with but I I set this up with the dial indicator. I got a terrible reflection there. And uh, even though this hasn't received much use, you can see that there's about five thousand dollars, five thousand, excuse me, I'm thinking about money, five thousandths of an inch uh, error or inaccuracy in this chuck. And uh, this is what the chuck that I consider the most precision. So my point by doing this is just to to show you that three jaw chucks are not all that accurate. I can see this video is going to run a lot longer than I want so it might have to be in two parts but I wanted to tell you something about this this chuck here. This is a very expensive three jaw chuck on this hardinge lathe and in fact this is called an adjust a true chuck and in fact what it is it's a three jaw chuck mounted uh, on a plate that really makes it in a way like a four jaw chuck. That is to say we've got some uh, bolts out here that allow us to adjust this chuck back into a true zero. So that's a project I might attack someday. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm making myself clear on this but in other words it's a chuck that can be uh, recalibrated back into a true zero. It's not an easy job to do and you would use an indicator to do it. I guess that's why I've been avoiding doing it but uh, that would bring this back into uh, 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 really to zero so some of you may have this kind of chuck but you can tell if it's uh, an adjust a true chuck by how many uh, bolts you got out here don't confuse them with these uh, three 
Well, this one only has two. Don't confuse it with the uh, uh, chuck tightening screw. There will be other bolts out here and don't touch those unless you intend to recalibrate your chuck.